In this video, we're going to do another example of proof by induction using a recurrence relation. So this one, I want you to pause the video after I explain the problem and try to solve this yourself. You're told that the following recurrence relation always produces odd integers. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and prove that this is indeed the case using strong induction. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and gave this one a try and you figured out the base cases and the inductive hypothesis, what you wanna show and tried to play with how, how to do it. Now let's go over this problem. So to do a proof by strong induction, the first question is, how many base cases are we going to need? Because we have these two base cases in our recurrence relation, we're going to need two base cases in our proof by induction. So we're going to have the first one is we pick the subscript of our first recurrence relation base case. So if n equals 1, we're going to then look at a sub 1, which is 1, and remember, our goal is we're looking, is the output always odd? So in this case, the output of A of 1 is 1, and 1 is odd. Now, you could be more formal and say that 1 equals 0 times x plus 1, where x is an integer which is using the official definition of odd, but I feel that this one is simple enough that everybody's comfortable with the fact that one, the number one is odd, so I don't think that's necessary. The second base case is gonna be two, because that's our second base case in our recurrence relation, and once again, a sub two is three, and three is odd. Okay, so looking at our inductive step, this one is where we're going to have to write our inductive hypothesis, which is really one of the most important parts of this proof. So remember how you write this, we're gonna to wanna to suppose that a number is odd in this recurrence relation in some range starting from the first recurrence relation point all the way up to K. So we're going to suppose that a sub i is odd for all 1 to k, all i is 1 to k, for k greater than or equal to 2. And again, the reason I picked these bounds, this 1 was chosen because that is our very first base case bound. And this 2 is chosen because it's our very last base case bound. Right. And again, if you go back to the first video about strong induction, you'll see that this is how we define strong induction, how we define the, uh, the ranges for the inductive hypothesis for strong induction. And this is set up so that when we do this, we want to show, what we're going to want to show is we want to show that A of K plus 1 is odd. Well, if K is greater than or equal to 2, then the minimum value that a of k plus 1 could be is a of 3. And notice that a of 3 is the very first time we're going to be looking in our recurrence relation instead of at a base case. And this is why these bounds are set up this way. Okay, so we want to show that a of k plus 1 is odd after assuming this whole range of values 1 through k, uh, a of 1 through k is odd. Well, let's use our recurrence relation. So we know that a of k plus 1 is going to equal a of k minus 1 plus 2 of a, k, a sub k using this recurrence relation. And again, this looks slightly different because here we have a plus 1, while here we only have n but you have to work this out, but this, this is all the same. This all works out. Okay, at this point, we need to use our inductive hypothesis. 
and where you might have gotten a little stuck when working on your own is at this point. What do we do? Well, by our inductive hypothesis, both of these values, a of k minus 1 and a of k, both fit in that range, or k minus 1 and k fit in this range, which means that a of k minus 1 and a of k are both odd. So what we can use is a general form of the formula for an odd number and say that a of k minus 1, well, I don't know what it is, but by the inductive hypothesis, I know that it's odd. So I'm going to say it's 2 times some integer plus 1 because that's the definition of an odd integer. And again, I don't know what a of k is, but by the inductive hypothesis, I know it's odd. So I'm going to give it a different definition for a different odd number because I don't know that, you know, there, there's no guarantee that they're the same. In fact, I don't know that there's any relationship between the two. So I'm going to use two different variables, x and y here. And I know they're both integers because that's the definition of odd. And we know they're odd by the inductive hypothesis. So I'm just going to substitute two different odd integers in to our equation here. And now this becomes a matter of algebra. Right. So if we simplify a little bit and distribute that too, then what we can do is we can start doing some factoring. We can factor out a 2 out of these three terms and leave that 1 at the end. And now we can go through those steps to turn this into a recognizable integer so that this fits the definition of an odd number as well. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to rename this as some variable z. And we're going to notice that z is an integer under the integer closure properties. Remember, this is a necessary step. Do not skip this step. This is required because this is not odd by our definition of odd. We do not have a definition that says 2 times some variable plus 2 times some other variable plus 1 combination all plus one is odd. That's not anywhere in our list of definitions. We have to use our list of definitions. What is in our list of definitions is that two times an integer plus one is odd. All right, so we have to get it in this form. And now we have this as the definition of odd, and that was our goal, right? That was what we were trying to show, and thus this proof is complete.